Welcome to Discover Life. Today, Pastor Ad Bosov is sharing on Something Must Go Up Part 2. Prayer is so important, but not only to pray for yourself, but also to pray for other people. And when you pray for other people, great things will start to happen in your own life. You will have to learn to pray the will of God into being. God is looking for a man. God is looking for a generation. God is looking for a people that will come to the altar and offer spiritual sacrifices of prayer. Sometimes people talk like God is losing this race. People talk like only a few people have the truth. But that's not what I understand from Scripture. When I read the Bible, I see God says of the increase of His kingdom, there will be no end. I read Revelation and the Bible says that the, the, the amount of people standing before the throne of God are innumerable. You cannot count them. Multitudes upon multitudes upon multitudes out of every tongue, every tribe and every nation. Oh, I want you to know that the Spirit of God is moving across the face of the earth. Hallelujah. God is still in control. Jesus is still winning this battle against darkness. Don't listen to these self-appointed prophets of doom that always tell you only a select few has the truth. Don't read books of stupid people like that. He said, not me. Jesus said, <laughs> I will build my church. Not a little church. Because he's not a little Jesus. He's not building a little white select group church. He's not building a little home group church somewhere. That's not what he's building. He's building his church without spot or wrinkle. Come on, a glorious church. A church of multitudes. A church of power. A church of splendor. And I want you to know who's building this church. Jesus Christ himself. He's building this church. And I want you to know Jesus Christ cannot fail. Hallelujah. He said, I will. And that means he will. In spite of what people think or declare or say, the prophets of doom. He's building his church. And he's called you and me to be part of that church. Thailand missions, right? Yes, Pastor Gerard, one of the missionaries we support in Suhue, Singapore, reaching out to Mandarin ladies and be prostitutes. Stand up quickly. We honor you. They're missionaries from this church doing a great job in Thailand, Singapore. And she was telling me the other day, beautiful people that went there. I mean, it's what people don't realize. The sacrifice, the days you people didn't have food, in the will of God, in the will of God, in the will of God. <laughs> it's like charismatics, all they look at is their bank balance. And while the bank balance is okay, God's with me. There's a lot of people with a bigger bank balance than yours and God's not with them. <laughs> Not saying don't have a good bank balance, but I'm saying that's not the purpose. The purpose is seek the kingdom. The other things will be added. Be a kingdom builder. Amen. Do your part in the body of Christ. Build the house of God. Build the church of God. Bring your finances to the house of God. Bring your sacrifice to the house of God. Build what God is building. God is building His church. But you know, when we stop praying with the body, we lose perspective of what God is doing. And we enter this selfish Christianity where it's all about me. We become fickle. I don't like the sound. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. And there are people in the world that are not spoiled for choices and options as we are in South Africa. We have never heard the gospel of Jesus preached. Who don't have a Bible, but they are followers of Christ. Who would do everything to be part of a church like this. They will not dare to criticize. They'll be lying on the carpet, weeping their eyes, eyes out because of the grace of God that they see in our midst. We forget. Then we begin to point a finger. And we do the work of the devil. And we stop the blessing of God. Brother against brother. Church against church. 
Well, uh, I don't believe in a groot doop. Well, I don't believe in a klein doop. Well, I don't believe in stalking in tongues. Well, I don't, you know, the Bible says all those things will pass away. The only thing that will not pass away is love. So you can always tell who motivates somebody. If the conversation is motivated by love, you know it's the Spirit of God. If it's motivated by judgment and accusation, you know it's not the Spirit of God. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. You don't need to be a prophet to discern it. Even if you have all the knowledge in the world, it profits you nothing. Even if you have faith so that you can move mountains, 1 Corinthians 13 says it profits you nothing. You can have your doctorate in, in doctrines and in theology, but if you do not have love, the Bible says it profits you nothing. When we pray, we see people through the eyes of Jesus. We discern the Lord's body. We love the Lord's body. You cannot be a man of prayer and you judge the body. When you're a man of prayer, you see how much Jesus loves his church. Every part. Every member. If he loves sinners so much, think how much he loves his own family. His own children, come on tonight, who have been redeemed by the blood of his precious son, Jesus Christ. Think for a moment how much God loves other Christians. Think how much God loves people. People dying tonight. Young children crying out for God. People down in, in nations where there's no freedom of religion. And the church in the Western world, and my heart sometimes feels broken, that we are so spoiled that we don't realize what this is all about. It's all about me, 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 me. We've used our faith to build our lives, and we are disconnected from the greater cause of the gospel of Christ, that the purpose why Jesus birthed the church was so that the church can be the hope of the world, the light of the world, that the church can go and take the love of Christ to nations and people that do not know Jesus Christ, that we can be His hands and we can be His feet in our world that we find ourselves in that you will get off your high horse and get to a child that have never been hugged get to a grandmother that urinates in a bed that's never been cleaned for the last three months and understand what this is all about it's not just to get you to heaven and accumulate accolades for yourself while you live on planet earth. It's to be the hands of Jesus in our world. To be the feet of Jesus in our world. To be the voice of God in our world. To tell that prostitute, neither do I condemn you. Jesus loves you. To go to that young girl that was molested and abused and put your arms around her with purity and tell her God loves you. You are beautiful. You are holy in the sight of God. Oh, come on somebody in Jesus' name. We bite and devour to the work of the devil. Stop a move of God through our carnality. Because people's hearts have wandered away from Him. Me, myself, and I. It's all that matters. Me, my family. Nobody else matters. There can be no revival with that heart. There can be no revival, no visitation of God in a generation with a heart like that. I have to teach you the right way. I have to tell you that this is not about the lifestyle. I have to tell you this is about separation. It's about love, loving Him, and allowing Him to love through you. And if you're a businessman and you're the top level of your world, that you will be the hands of Jesus there because you know as good as I know, people with the most money are oftentimes the loneliest and the emptiest people on planet Earth. That you would not be caught up in that same place of thinking your money 
that gives you the power is your identity. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant. He's taking you to those places so you can sit and talk to the hearts of people that are lost without Jesus Christ. What are you doing, God? (laughs) What are you doing, Jesus, in our world? Don't you want to know? Isn't it your heart's cry? What are you doing, God? What's on your agenda? I'm building this business over here. But what is your agenda? Why am I building this business? What is your plan for my life, God? Why are we building a building in Pretoria? What is your plan for us, oh God? Why are we doing what we do? What is on your heart? Otherwise, you just survive and live your little life. You always compare with other people and compete with other people. I know more, I know less. And people that very often live good lives and we should live righteous lives become self-righteousness. And that's a problem. Because when you're self-righteous, you look down your nose at people. You drive past somebody standing and begging and you're thinking, what are you doing here? But if you look at that person differently, you realize, Thank you, Jesus, I'm not here. I have two rand in my pocket. I'm going to help him. I don't care if he's trying to cheat people. I just want to help him, Jesus. And if you stop at the petrol garage, I just want to help him. That man that doesn't have a job, that's standing with a board, paint or whatever it is, rather than judging him, saying, Lord, bless him, help him, give him a job, Father. Bless him in the name of Jesus, displaying the heart of God for our generation. I'm telling you, it starts at prayer and it ends at prayer. When we stop praying for other people, all we think about is ourselves, our own needs, our own wants and our own desires. And as long as I'm okay, I don't really care about anybody else. And that's not our calling. Our calling is to stand and to pray. To pray for our leaders. To pray for our nation. To pray for the lost. To pray. I'm challenging the church. All over South Africa. That like never we will pray. And if you don't know how, the only way you learn to pray is by praying with other people. Prayer is something that is caught. It's not something I can teach. You catch it by praying with other people. You learn how to pray by praying with other people. Amen. There is no other way. There is no substitute for prayer. People become lukewarm because they're not at the place of prayer. And I'm not talking about your quiet time. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about intercession. Talking about being part of the body. Praying with the body. Praying with other people. Some of you left that place of prayer. You need to come back to that place of prayer. So that the church can be who God calls us to be. The hope of the world. Making a difference in our generation. It only takes one believer in a rugby team. To be the instrument that God uses to save the whole rugby team. I need to be so careful. Because when sometimes people say, Pastor, I got saved under your ministry. Then somebody will quick to say, well, Art Bosov doesn't save people. I am the first person to say, I cannot save anybody. I know that. But I know God can use me to pray for people. I know God can use me to make a difference in people's lives. And so can God use you if you will give Him your obedience, your time. And if you start a prayer meeting. When I was in the army back in 1983, when we did national service, we were then compelled to. I was the only Christian. I got saved a few weeks before I went into the army. I was the only Christian in my platoon. There were a lot of traditional people. I'm talking about born again. You know what I'm saying because now people will write and say blah, blah, blah. Let's just talk about a Christian. Born again, out of hell, in heaven. Somebody that lived for Christ and is redeemed by the power of God. Okay? We know what a Christian is. Amen? So I was alone like this for three months had no pass. Just got saved. I had the Holy Ghost. What did I do? I prayed. When we had still the date every evening, 10 to 10, 15, I would climb on my bed in that dormitory, on the middle of my bed, and I would go on my knees and I would pray loud for 15 minutes. I would just pray. And I feel all the pressure. Everybody looking. I'm not saying do that, but that's what I did. And I would pray and I would pray and I would pray and I would pray. And I feel the pressure. I kept my eyes closed and I just pray. And 
then one day the chaplain came to me a few weeks later because he thought I was disrupting everybody. He said, you, you can't do that. I said, why? He said, that's not of God. I said, well, I could never do this before I gave my life to Jesus Christ. The only thing I could do, I spoke in other tongues. I was cursing left, right and center. So that's who I was. There was another language come out of me. And I said to him, I could never do this. He looked at me like this and I said, His eyes went big like this and then he just walked away. And I never stopped. And in six months, half my platoon was saved. Half of them was coming to church with me. Half of them came to me privately and said, I want what you have because I would just pray like Daniel. Open the window and pray unashamedly and announce the glory of God. Announce the kingdom of God. Come on, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. We are not ashamed. We are the generation that this world is looking for. You are God's servants that He has chosen for this time. So be bold in Jesus' name. Sit for a move. And my first prayer, I pray, I'll never forget it. When I went into the army, I said, God, my, first I prayed a bad prayer. I prayed Andre's prayer. I said, Lord, I want to be a corporal because I thought my personality was more to be a corporal. Okay. <laughs> but the lieutenant has more influence. Okay. But I didn't understand it then. So I, I saw that in a mechanized unit, the lieutenant actually calls all the shots. So my prayer actually changed. I said, Lord, I want to be an officer. Keep me at MLW, mechanized leadership wing, to be involved in the training of the future leaders. Because I understood if I can impact them, they can impact their platoons and they can impact, be impact hundreds and hundreds of people. So as a lieutenant, every night, every night, not some nights, every night, I would gather them in those 15 minutes and I would do Bible study with them. And every night for a year while they were my troops, I would say every night, every head bowed, every eye closed. <laughs> and they would sit there. They started 50 in January. And by the end of the year, it was like 33 people. And every night they heard me say, every head bowed, every eye closed. Except when we were in the bush. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, and I'm standing there as a lieutenant. Then every night, well not every night, but many nights, somebody would raise up their hand and then guess what I would do? I would take them to the ironing room. Because <laughs> I understood as a young believer, and it's sad how often young believers understand their purpose more than the mature believers in the body of Christ. Because young believers, all they have is the fire of God. I was blind, now I see. I was lost, I'm found. I'm saved, I have Jesus. I've got to tell somebody else what Jesus has done in my life. We should never lose that passion and that boldness in our world. Come on, no matter how high you climb this ladder, you can never lose that boldness and that power. I've got to tell somebody. I've got to tell somebody. I've got to tell somebody in my business. I've got to tell somebody in the rugby team. I've got to tell somebody. Lord, show me who's ready to be saved. And those are the prayers I used to pray. I used to pray, God, show me. There was this young guy, very wealthy family from Johannesburg. He was very skeptic. His surname was, he started with a V. So when we did our section leading and we stayed in trenches, my surname would be, they divided us up. So you stayed with the person that had the same letter or the letter closest to you. He, unsaved, made this prayer. Lord, if you are real, put me in a trench with Adbosov. Now I'm B, he's von die Kerk. So we dig our trench and the guy that's with me becomes sick. Not God made him sick. He just became sick. <laughs> okay, so he left. Went to the medics. He was out. So I was alone. Two-man trench. Because it's a two-man or a three-man trench. Okay? So I'm lying there alone. Next minute, the other corporal comes. Butler brings this young guy. He says, he says, there's no place for him with the bees. So he has to stay with you. That night, while it's raining, sleeping under our bivy, he tells me the story. And I lead him to Jesus Christ in the dirt, dirt. Six foot under the, not six foot, like four foot in the dirt. I lead him to Jesus Christ. We lie like this. My head there, his head there. Oh, come on, give God praise a little bit because it's one extra soul that's in heaven tonight. Hallelujah. Because people are watching you all the time. People are watching your works all the time. People are watching your integrity all the time. They're watching you. You are a living epistle written by God in this generation. You are the hope of the world. And I was that young man's hope. I've never seen him again. But I know he'll be in heaven one day. And as we lay there, 
rain falling. He said to me, I've been very skeptical. I've watched you. I never thought this was real. And I said to God, if you are real, put me in the same trench. And then it was easy to lead him to Jesus because God had done everything. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, when we pray, God does the work. Hallelujah. When we pray in our churches, God, God prepares the hearts. God prepares the people. God prepares the sacrifice. Come on, pastors. If we will pray, God will pour out His Spirit. God will cause that hard ground to become soft in the name of Jesus Christ. We need to pray for a move of God. We need to pray that God will pour out His Spirit upon the dry places in our nation, in our churches. Because as we pray, heaven will come down. Oh, come on, somebody lift your head and give God praise. Lift your voice to God a little bit. Wherever you are, in whatever city you are, lift your voice to God tonight. Give Him praise. Give Him worship. Give Him your adoration tonight. Come on. How will they hear without a preacher? We are the hope of this world. People are waiting on the other side of your obedience. Just lift your hands and pray a little bit. Pray a little bit. Pray a little bit. Pray a little bit. I feel a spirit of travailing. Pray a little bit. Come on. Pray. Pray for lost people. Pray for prodigals. Pray for your sons and your daughters. Pray for your families. Pray for your father. Pray for your mother. Oh God, save them. Oh God, save them. In Jesus' name, pray for your rugby teammates. Pray for those that lost the fire of God. Pray for those who lost the zeal of God. Come on, lift your voices to the heavens and let prayers arise to the throne of God tonight. Come on. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving. If you're kneeling, please remain quiet as you are. Holy Spirit is calling many of you back to your first love. Back to the place that you once knew. The place of total surrender. Tonight you can close your heart or you can say, yes, Lord. And you can melt. Our hearts are like wax or clay that when the sun falls upon it, it either hardens or melts. I suggest you allow your heart to melt in His presence. Jesus loves you more than you will ever know, more than you will ever understand. You know God is talking to you tonight. How do you know? You know because in your heart you sense what you've never sensed before or what you have forgotten. It's like your heart racing a million miles. The Holy Spirit is loving on you, calling you to surrender your life to Him. While every head is bowed, every eye closed all over this place. You're standing in that place or sitting in that place, you know God is talking to you. Maybe you served God at one time but you've grown cold and you've wandered away from Him. Tonight, God is calling you home. Give your life to Jesus. Beautiful young girl, young man, whoever you are, give your life to Jesus. Or maybe you've backslidden like that prodigal son. You've lost yourself and tonight you need to recover yourself. You say, Pastor, I know God is talking to me. Then I want to pray for you right now. As you surrender your life to Jesus. If that's your desire, quietly, wherever you are, unashamedly, lift your hand up high. And I'm going to say a prayer for you. Quickly, lift your hand high, 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 all over this place. God bless you all over this place. There is no shame in the presence of God. So all over this place, all over this country, in every church where people are, if you raised your hand, you know God is talking to you. You want to get right with God. You want to give your life to Jesus. I want you to take your Bible, your personal belongings, and I want you to leave your chair right now and walk down the altar closest to you and come stand with me at the throne of God, at the, at, at the altar of God. Come on, give your life to Jesus. There is no shame. Come on, there is only gain as you come to Jesus Christ. Put your arm around your friend. Walk your friend down on the altar tonight. Come on. Pray this prayer right now. Put your hand on your heart. Pray this prayer with all your heart right now. All over this country. Wherever you are, pray this prayer right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Thank you for loving me just as I am. I believe with all my heart 
You died for my sin. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you are alive. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Thank you for a new beginning. Here I am, Lord. Take all of me. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Adi. This message really had an impact on me. And I believe the same for other people out there. When prayer goes up, deliverance comes down. And when we as the body of Christ pray, we live a life beyond ourselves. For more information on Pastor Adi and Pastor Narita's ministry, please visit our website. I'm Sidi Gude. And I'm Angelique Bosov. Be blessed. Be blessed.